By 1991, things are not looking good. The Canadian economy is crippled by a recession, but SNC-Lavalin must find work fast. It has a combined workforce of 7,000 employees, but not enough projects to support them all. Further complicating things, globalization has created new opportunities, but also brought more competition onto the playing field. Guy Saint-Pierre needs a winning strategy. I think it's fair to say that in the mid-1980, it became obvious that globalization was going to be here for a long period of time and was going to affect all of the industries. And for engineering, it meant that we could not only have people from Canada, whether in Montreal, Calgary or Toronto, uh, go and do some work in overseas. It meant that we had to either acquire company overseas or either we had established firm uh, position overseas. With a new approach, the big contracts come quickly. The best elements of the two former rivals join forces to win a series of mega projects. An aluminum smelter in South Africa, the largest ever built at once, and a mass transit project in Turkey, by far the biggest fixed price contract in the history of either SNC or Lavalin. While SNC Lavalin is winning major jobs overseas, St. Pierre follows through with his plan to strengthen the company's global position by acquiring top firms in new international markets. In 1994, the acquisition of Villere in Chile is a natural next step, giving SNC Lavalin a foothold in the thriving South American mining industry. The acquisition of the French agri-food experts, Penga Ingenierie, in 1996 marks the beginning of a rapid penetration of the European market.